This is 90.3 KEXP and KEXP.org Worldwide. I'm John Richards, host of The Morning Show. It is our Music Heals Day, and man, I cannot be more happy to see my friend Billy here, Billy McCarthy. Hi. Hey, buddy. I've seen you already this morning, but seeing you in the studio again uh, immediately brings me back. A lot of memories. Yeah. With, with you, your bands, um, and us over the years. And uh, man, what an honor to have you up here in Seattle, just just for today, just just for this event. Just do, yeah. I know you have history here. Yeah, man. In the city and the station. Yeah, we got a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk a little bit about it. I'd love to hear a song. What are we going to open up with? Um, if you're ready. I don't yeah, wanna... yeah. I think we should do Still I Rise. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Come on, 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 come on,
You bastard. <laughs> First song, you got me in tears. Morning, brother. God. The weight of today is hit with that song. And, and knowing, you, knowing where it comes from. Yeah, I think we knew each other pretty well through those years. Yeah, we did. Um, suicide and in, in, in depression and in, in mental health is, is prevalent in your life, in, yeah. in your family. And uh, yeah, when I got to know you, you were dealing with your brother. Yeah. I don't remember, I don't remember the timeline of, of, of all that happened to him and where it relates to us. But can you tell people for, who are new to, to, to your, your story a little bit about sure. your brother this morning? Uh, it's KXP is actually involved in it in, yeah. in, in some way. Uh, I was in an indie band in America, <laughs> out there in America somewhere, playing, you know, touring up and down the coast. And we started playing in Seattle and things went really well. I mean, there's like this really great radio station there called KXP. And uh, we got invited to play with Sonic Youth. And um, it was kind of a big deal. And we went and played it, and two weeks later, I'd, I'd been working on these songs for like Payless' second record. And um, our band was kind of falling apart, and I got this phone call that my brother died. And the record that I'd been working on was called Rise of Sunken Ships. And it was basically me coming out about the fact that my brother was in prison and that my family had been suffering through mental illness for like, since I was born and that I'd struggled through it and had come to a place where I couldn't kind of be in the closet anymore about it. And so I got this call that he, my brother, um, yeah, he took his life in, in prison. They had, they'd taken him to a psychiatric facility to evaluate him and he never stood trial because he wasn't fit to stand trial, so he was in solitary confinement for five years, which exacerbated the situation. And he finally felt completely hopeless and he killed himself. So I was left with kind of a half done record, a band that broke up. The Sonic Youth stuff was awesome <laughs> and seeing you was great, but it really went into a wilderness after that. And I had to start I had to start kind of educating myself on what has existed in the periphery of the of the American experience. I had to face healthcare. I had to face um, race. I had to face my family history, the system, all of it. And um, I spoke with. You know, I spoke with different inmates. I spoke with his his attorney, and I just had to face all of this stuff that I'd been kind of quietly living with. And then when I decided to keep going with uh, Eric Sanderson from Pela, um, we got in touch with you guys, and you were very very supportive, and uh, among other people. But it was very small, if you remember. It was yeah. just yeah. me kind of meeting up with you and your wife, and just saying like, John, I don't really know where to go. Um, and the first thing we did was we quit making the situation harder for ourselves so we could see clearly because it was a very tall mountain to climb. And so we quit drinking and I started working with um, people with disabilities rather than bars, doing the kind of indie rock <laughs> bar life, the late night, you know, whiskey soaked life. And I started working with the elderly and people with disabilities, quit drinking and we kind of pulled ourselves together and we got this album called Rise of Sunken Ships out. I remember coming home uh, in, when we were in New York and I remember you and Eric on the couch <laughs> and Amy has a giant whiteboard with sticky notes as she does. Oh yeah, she definitely did. <laughs> and I come walking in after doing the show and, and she's up there. In my mind, she's got like a pointer stick, but I don't think she did. But in my mind, okay, here's the pros and the cons about what was going on with, yeah. with you all in the band. There were so many cons. Yeah, we were being chased. So many. We were being chased legally. Yeah. Um, I was, I was starting to get really kind of cryptic and scary phone calls from inmates that were telling, telling, I didn't even know they had my number. I don't know how they got my number, but they were saying that, that they were just telling me stuff that had been painted over and that, you know, where he had hung himself had been 
removed and they'd painted over it like it didn't happen. And when I went to meet and get his belongings at the prison, like I was met with like armed police and I wanted to know what happened. And they, because I had sent him money and I wanted to see if there was any note. And they just said, it's a case, a close case. Can't give you anything. You, you need to leave. And I actually was taken out of there by like forcibly removed from the prison because I was f- being a big brother, freaking out. Like I want my brother's stuff now. And I got a pair of underwear a uh, wristband and a pair of shoes. That's all I had of him. And is, that's how it ended. There's no more clarity than that? No Nothing. More. No note. They wouldn't give me anything. Largely, and I hope we get into this, but largely to protect themselves legally. That you incarcerate a person for five years and put them in a box, and then you remove them and let them walk freely in like a state hospital type of thing. Wow, imagine that. He killed himself in eight days because he had the chance to, and it was on your, it's on, on your watch. I, uh, yeah. All right. We're going to uh, talk more with Billy McCarthy here. Uh, uh, and you have, uh, I think, an Augustine song coming up next. Yeah, I do. And uh, I have a, uh, if you know I'm reading a quick email that came in right before I walked in here. Uh, Luke wrote in and said, I'm so excited for Billy McCarthy to come on. In college, I was going through a breakup, working through panic attacks, and beginning the path to understanding how my family's history of depression manifested itself in me. When I couldn't sleep that year, I'd go to the dorm's pool table in the middle of the night and put on Augustine's Rise Ye Sunken Ships album in my headphones. Billy's words and emotions made me know I wasn't feeling, uh, that what I was feeling was that I felt alone. I wasn't alone. I still turn to the Augustines when I'm having a hard time. Thank you for what you're doing. So uh, I should hear that. Making uh, impacts, man. Hey, yeah, uh, I'll tell you, it takes two, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a collaboration. I it appreciate is. him saying that. Yeah. All right, we got another song for Billy here, and then we'll talk a little bit more uh, about our friend Scott. All right.
KDXP, Billy McCarthy here on The Morning Show. An Augustine song, you can find him under Pela, Augustine's. We are Augustine's. Yeah. Is it under William McCarthy for solo? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to screw it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, William, Mc- yeah, William McCarthy just seemed like more official. It does. You seem it's grown like, up. And I, yeah, it's always what I have to write on like check my rent check, so why not? <laughs> I'm all grown up now. Uh, you're all grown up and on the road. And uh, you even have a, uh, a movie out, a documentary called yeah. Rise, the story of the Augustines. And it just had its world premiere at the Raindance Film Festival in London. Can, uh, can you tell everyone uh, about the film? We talked a little bit about what it's about just by talking about your brother and yeah, your so band. That's but... sort of, uh, I, so the Rise experience was sort of, the Rise of Circus Ships years was very interesting because you saw us kind of in our, in our beat up van days but i think that we were we were you know we were really trying to to go forward and and we did and and it really took off uh and we met a fella um named todd howe who was in a band called the box rebellion and he kind of came out of nowhere and was just really supportive and introduced us to his girlfriend um there in england and um a, a really great bunch of guys uh, called Votive, a record label, and um, a fellow named Brent Stiefel came in and we just put this record out and everyone put their heart into it and it really took off. Um, and we put out three records and multiple EPs and, 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 then it, and then it ended and Todd called me and was like, you know, hey, we should do a film. And this was some time in 2014 and, and it ended up being a um, four-year project through 16 countries and it really talks about this journey that Eric and I took um, in mental illness and kind of being survivors in some level through the, the really dark side of the music industry. Uh, a lot of sort of bullying going on in New York City from the big wigs and so on and how we sort of prevailed. And um, our story, you know, it's, it's just a story, but it's, it's a story about um, standing up and, go, and, and moving on, moving forward. Yeah, I highly recommend seeing it. It's, again, it's called Rise, the Story of Augustine's. I had to meet Todd when he was interviewing us, and a uh, great guy. There's a little cameo in there. Yeah. Well, Who, me? A, uh, a rising stage actor, thespian. <laughs> uh, when they filmed... <laughs> John Richards. When they... By the way, a little side note here. So we were... When he came and filmed at my house... He was so nervous. Was he? I think oh, he was. well, here's the best part of that story. Uh, and we were having our uh, work done on our house, like our bathroom. So we were living in our basement, Amy and I. <laughs> so we had our bed down there. But that's where we work. So we had this giant desk down there where we worked. And so I, had to, I was late or whatever, and he was setting up. But you had to set up the lights by the bed to get the shot of the yeah. desk. Yeah. So I walk in, and it's Todd and another dude and my wife, and there's just cameras pointed at a bed with lights. And I'm like, hmm, what's... Uh, <laughs> So what, it's like an adult what, film. What are we filming here, guys? <laughs> what's happening? Am I, am, I, am I the DJ who walks in? Is this what's happening? And that was my introduction. <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you, Todd. <laughs> but then, you know, I was in a very happy mood to be able to talk nice things about you because I think it was all set up for that and it was nothing but uh, great to, to meet Todd. To and- be fair, dude, I, it takes... I, what I've learned through, through music is that, first of all, like, community first, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that in Seattle, which is hilarious. But it takes a village to raise a band. It really does, man. And 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 I think him f- putting in the film is because that was the early days, and that's really what happened. So, it well, I, when you when people are able to see it, I, I really hope they do. Again, rise the story of Augustine's, and if you're a music fan, uh, and and the talk about mental health, and, yeah. and that is such a big part of this film. That, yeah. Uh, it is. Again, it really, you can relate on so many levels. All right, you're going to play another song, yeah. um, uh, another Augustine song, I believe. Yeah. Um, this is a Dr. Dre tune. It's called Real OGs. <laughs> it's, um, do this in the key of C. Not lying, are you? <laughs> this is Real OGs, live on KXP. <laughs> So, OG, I might have lost my mind along the way. Thank you. 
accent In what came someplace Just feel like home That cage follows you Wherever you go And why are you there Bleeding in my dream Well baby All oh, things fade away It seems That you're on your own KEXP and Billy McCarthy live here on the morning show. Your solo album Shelter, as well. Should mention that out yeah. in 2017. Yeah, I just put that out last summer. Yeah, and um, I'm yeah, I'm kind of doing what I how I how I started was just me and an acoustic. Well, yeah, and you're telling stories and, and sharing your artwork and your journal. I remember talking to you years about your desire to do that, and yeah. uh, you are doing that. It was, I don't know what got into me, um, but I decided to do, I think I was watching a TED Talk. I haven't seen a ton of them. That'll do it. But I was like, <laughs> hey man, wait a second. I want to tell some stories. So I went on a, a one-man show um, tour called Journals, Maps, Stories, and Songs. And I basically told the story of my life and this, the, the whole tour sold out. And I was thinking, hey, this uh, the written word stuff's cool. So I... <laughs> I um, I wrote a book uh, this year and um, and I'm loving it because I think that's maybe uh, in the whiskey soaked years and stuff maybe what was that kind of um, gravity was sort of missing um, that groundedness and stuff and so now I feel much more like a balanced artist and I'm feeling really capable in like every single thing that I'm doing. Well, the stories too should be heard. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a it's quite a life you've led. <laughs> It's, it leads me to believe that everyone has a tremendous story. They do. If I've learned anything, mm -hmm. um, it's the guy sitting on the subway right next to you. Um, everyone has a biography, and it's pretty interesting, like, finding out people's stories. And there's a commonality, and so, there's so many commonalities between all of us, and I'm really, really happy. This has been a cause that I've been really outspoken about in, in mental health. Well, transitioning there to, uh, to Frightened Rabbit and Scott Hutchinson, when was the first time you met Scott? I would say I met Scott in 2011. Okay. Um, it was very interesting. This is a very full, this is like the story that I came here to tell. Okay. Um, basically, ironically, I what happens when somebody commits suicide is that it's an absolute shock. I think when someone's terminally ill, it's a different transition. It's a great shock. And I remember sitting on my couch, I was sort of, I was just knocked out, just like a boxer, just out on the canvas, and I couldn't get up. I just couldn't get my feet in line um, to get myself going. And what I did disappear into at night was 
I disappeared into music because I'd been playing music for so long that little known fact, a lot of musicians don't listen to music because they feel like it kind of disturbs the you know, way you're configured and stuff. So I, I had not listened to music in years and I started really drinking a, a ton of beer at night and just surfing around on, online. And I found this really shaggy, funny looking group of guys. And it was a cover called Set You Free. And it was by a band called Frightened Rabbit from Scotland. And I had never even been to, to Scotland. And uh, I remember writing DJ Shannon. Mm -hmm. um, I might have called her. And I was just like, do you know these guys? And she's like, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, here's my not finished record called Risey Sunken Ships. Could you get it to the singer? I didn't know his name. And she's like, sure, I, I totally do that for you. It's like, I appreciate it. Cause what I found in the little bit that I uh, observed from him is that he, he, it was like writer to writer, his he, words were first. And that's really hard to find out there. It, actually few and far between um, and people that do it really well. And the only person I could think of in my mind that had done it, he was doing it kind of out of nowhere like as good as Jeff Mangum from Neutral Milk Hotel, but like randomly from a completely different part of the world, um, Bell and Sebastian, that's all I know about Scotland. So she gets it to him and um, she forwarded the email. He's like, it's really good, you know? And I was just thinking meeting another songwriter. So we ended up going to, to ironically within a year, we were in Scotland. Um, we were opening for a band called Glass Vegas. Um, and I remember tweeting because we went over the fourth road bridge and I remember, I remembered it from, I, I kept saying, another thing is we had a connection through Peter Cadis. He had worked with Peter Cadis and in the, in, in the, when we first started out in Pela, um, we were on the national, the national signed us to the record label. And we had always wanted to work with Peter, the, the producer that works with them. And they had been, they worked with Peter Cadis and I thought, well, that's even feels more familiar. How cool. So I'm going over this bridge and early days, very early Twitter days. Um, I just threw a Hail Mary out there like, hey, we're playing at the blah, blah, blah tonight. And I'll put you on the list. Is this the fourth road bridge that you're talking about? And Scott Hodgson writes back, sure is. <laughs> and so we play this show. It's a, it's a, it's, you know, very weird band. They didn't, it was one of those bands that just doesn't talk to the support act. And they were just like, the singer was like, <laughs> In soundcheck, he was like working on tunes by himself after the band left. And I'm like, I'm going to smash this dude in the face. I'm just not having this stuff. I almost said the S word. I'm not having this crap. Like, who the hell is this dude? And we're not some puppy band. Like, get off the damn stage and let us do our thing. So um, we do our thing. And I look out and there's Scott. And Scott's with Billy Kennedy. And they stand in the crowd and I'm like, you're kidding me. But it wasn't, I mean, we're all just indie bands. So it didn't, who cares? But I get off stage and I can't wait to get off stage. So I'm like, oh, and that's how exciting it is to meet another songwriter when you really appreciate their stuff. And I get out and I get off stage and I go out in the crowd and I walk up to Scott and he's actually taller than he kind of appears on, he's like six feet tall, right? So I'm like, I tapped him on the shoulder and he opens his arms and he says, Billy, in his accent and he hugs me and proceeded to take us out to like five in the morning. Um, doing karaoke. So here I am struggling. I was working on a truck. Um, I was working with disabled people like, and a year later I'm in um, Edinburgh, I think it was. And I'm in singing the Proclaimers, 500 miles with Scott. Of course. Out of, you know, off our heads, like on rum and coke. They drink like really sugary drinks there. <laughs> anyway, so we're up all night and it's like a fairy tale, right? So then as, as the story goes, then we started working with Peter Cadis and we had this commonality and we sit down at the organ and we're like, oh my God, it's the Midnight Organ Fight organ. It's the same one. Peter's lovely. We all have mutual, you know, so we're all in this thing. And um, I write to Scott and he's constantly there for me, like sending me bands to check out, um, asking if I needed to borrow any gear. He wanted to, do, he wanted to write some songs. If you ever want to, I'm here, you know, come on out. And um, I sent him the roughs and stuff and, and, He's like, do you want to go on tour? And um, yeah, like, I was like, of course I do. So I, I called our label and 
they were like, yes, and they were behind us. And we went out for like five weeks all over the country. I mean, we went to weird places. We were in Florida, no offense uh, to Florida, but like we were playing on a beach. It was like, they're from Scotland, like half the crew, like 75% of the crew had like ginger beards. You know what I mean? These guys were like, like pink fist in the air, like out drinking before the show. It's hysterical. But anyway, so we, um, we really got on and Scott actually loved the record and he loved Rise and he really loved Headlong. And he asked if he could come on stage with us <laughs> and play. So we started going on stage with them. And so we were singing with them every night. And, and um, it's funny, when I start talking, it's like, I feel like he's still around. Yeah. But one thing that I will hold dear is I don't want to see the titles of the songs because the gift is, is each song that I hear from them is a memory of me on stage with Scott because often I would share a microphone with him, you know, like... Uh, like Mick and Keith style, like in the same mic. And um, we would, I would sing in the mic and Scott's like <laughs> gingery, funny beard. His eyes would be closed, super tight. And um, I'd be singing, kind of looking at him. And I, I just saw what he was going through. And as it turns out, um, Scott had kind of a, a, kind of had a little bit of a wobble there probably about a year ago. And he had gone off on this Twitter rant about him being fraudulent. And it was sort of like just self-deprecating. And I wrote him and um, I was like, UK buddy. And he wrote me this beautiful email. And this is what makes me cry is that the email that he sent to me, it was like, Billy, just remember, they can all go to hell. Like if you need to look after you, you look after you. And um, like, get out of town and go sort yourself out. And he's like, this is, take your life and give it a shake. And um, always there for you, man, love Scott. And I, when I found out that he was missing, I wrote him immediately. And uh, I'm struggling to get my head around all of it, to be honest with you, man. Um, I met his parents and his, his lady and his, all the band guys, you know, you're out on the road, you kind of become this little camp and I saw his world. And I do remember I'm working on a new record and I kind of keep lyrical notes in my phone and I was going through notes and I, saw, I, I just remember how exhausted we were. And I think that the music community, this subject has been taboo. And I have a lot to say about it because I've long said that if you go to someone's house and they say, oh, my dad come, can't come downstairs for supper with us because he's got a bad knee, it's never been okay to say, my father can't come down because he's got a bad head. And I think that we just don't understand how to process mental health in this country, not to mention, and I don't want to go on a negative trip about America. Suicide is the leading cause of death in the United Kingdom, for people the ages of 26 and 34. Um, especially in males for some reason. And when you look at it, not a lot of people, like, you know, people don't really go to therapy. I think for musicians like myself, many of us don't have health insurance. So Joe Bartender, Joe Indie Rock Kid, Joe Construction Worker, they don't want to spend $150 an hour for therapy. They don't even know, their friends might not even be, in a, there's not a culture of, of help. There's going to the bar. And uh, that, I, I take it from me. It only goes so far. And I just wish that, you know, like when you see millennials or kids in school now, like um, gender norms are changing. People's understanding of sexuality is changing. It's okay to be gay. There's, like, things have changed since we were kids in a generation. I would like to see in the next generation I would like to, if somebody A is feeling something, I would like them to be able to turn to another person and say, I'm just, I don't know. Um, sometimes I wanna hurt myself, I don't know. I'm just mentioning it. And I feel like we have a responsibility as human beings to each other to say, you've given me that information. And because as a culture, we understand what to do with that information, I'm gonna talk to a couple people about how to help you with this. Rather than it just being a Hail Mary, nothing happens, poof, people get hurt. Anthony Bourdain, Chris Cornell, Robin Williams. I understand, my mother took her own life. 
she was homeless, she was on drugs, she was toothless, she was hopeless. My brother took his life, he was hopeless. These people were like somewhat trapped in the system. But as a culture, we need to know what bipolar is. I think we need to know what manic is. We need to, we need to understand what these things are and they're not bad words. They're not bad words. Schizophrenia, hey. You know, we, we go to get our coffee and we walk by human beings that are deteriorating on the street, standing there, deteriorating, covered in bacteria, urine, sickness, they're freezing, and we walk right by. And it takes a rock and roller or someone that's meaningful to us in our palate for us to go, damn, that's messed up. But it's all around us. We just don't talk about it. So it's not a shame on us type of situation. It's like, we can do better. We can do better because I mean, this is what's going to happen. If people, I wanna urge people that are not feeling okay to know, yes, you're not alone. And if you tell me that information, I know who to call. And I support you, man. Well said. I wish, uh, I wish for all the people who've already done that, they had that, that world that you want. Yeah, there's so many of them, and uh, and I know it's been big in your family, and uh, yeah. you know, and every day, every day, uh, when it comes to grief too, that we don't talk about. Walking that, with loss is is very different than not walking with loss. I couldn't agree more. So tonight you're gonna uh, you're gonna be part of our show, our tribute to Scott. We thought uh, a great way, uh, Shannon, by the way, been instrumental in in tonight. Our, yeah. uh, who you referenced earlier. Who, who will get Scott from Frightened Rabbits, a uh, band's music too, uh, when asked. That tells you a little bit about her and KXP. Um, you're going to be playing some songs of Scott's, and you're going to play one for us now, right? Yeah, I would love to, Great. actually. Um, I wanted to say... I've done a lot of stuff, man. I'm, I'm doing a documentary. I've done a book. I've done records, and... Covering a song from someone who you actually care about and you've been on stage with and that that, that is a friend, yeah. not easy, man. I and I imagine. really thought I tried, this is I did two different songs and I would just go in, into these tunnels and have good memories and then disbelief and empathy for the for his bandmates and um, hopefully this is one one contribution to the evolution of ho hopefully our culture being a little bit more aware and looking out for each other a little better. And this song's called Death Dream. Kitchen light was still on. I stepped in, found suicide asleep on the floor. And an open mouth screams and make no sound. Apart from the ring of the tinnitus of silence, you had your ear to the ground. Noise. I don't know if there's breathing or not Butterfly arms Tell me this one has flown Blood seems black It's the skin of your porcelain bed Still life It's the last I'll see you Painting of the panic attack Died in his sleep last night 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 You died in his sleep last night Died in his sleep last night You died in his sleep last night You died in his sleep last night Death dreams you don't forget since I dreamed this book Even now I sleep I'll chant with care Death dreams you don't forget It's been a while since I dreamed this book Even now 
I'll tread with care I'll tread with care Well done. Did you feel like you were talking to an old friend when you went through that song, when you really, really went into that song to figure it out? Like, did you see him there? Did you, I don't know how to put it. No. Like when you dive into someone's words though, did you, did the, I don't know, the meaning of his songs or did you already, did you already do that? Cause you were singing them on stage. Um, yeah, I think I was just supportive of how good he, how, how great work that they all did. Yeah. And I was um, happy to be on stage with them, backing him up on that. Going through the lyrics, um, I think Scott was very, I think some of the stuff that he was saying to her, I watched some interviews, because I, I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Last time I saw him was at a festival in, in um, Scotland. And he was talking a lot about a shtick. He didn't want to get stuck in doing the Frightened Rabbit shtick. And... Uh, it's hard, it's, you know, it's like he had been dropping sort of this stuff. I don't know if he thought he was dropping clues. I think he was just being honest to his own very high artistic standard. And um, when I look at it, what I love about Scott's writing is that he had a lot of contempt and he was very dubious about modern man. But he retained an innocence again and again and again, he'd get back up. And when I look at him and I think about, I've met his parents and stuff and I just think of him as a kid, um, quietly pouring his heart into his work and that's what I get when I read his lyrics. Um, I've never met somebody that was so articulate and could literally make an entire room fall out laughing, but also could barely sit with you through a dinner and was very uncomfortable. Um, so he, he battled that. And uh, I also wanna say as sort of a big brother, okay, now I'm getting a little older, like a, an older bro um, to younger musicians, like it doesn't matter what people think or what bloggers write or if you're band is climbing or they're not climbing like let them think what they want what's um, what's important is what you do in your lifetime and what how you carry yourself and what your mission is on this earth and I think Scott was aware of that and that's what made him very special and I think when he did make tiny changes he was very aware of that and he was very adored and I think that spending time with him um very interesting to see that whole not be filled up with adoration. And that's a very tricky thing. And that's why as an adult, you know, having lived a bit, I just wish I could have said, hey, guess what? Not touring guys. Um, you're, going, you're going to see a shrink. I will say I have fans, um, like I have somewhat confessional type of lyrics as well. So I, I, I get feedback from people and my European fans like, I have, there's two of them that I know at the moment, one has just checked herself into a f facility and one has just gotten out of a facility and is doing very well, but they were eager to go to the facility and get some help. Like, Hey, I'm not okay. I'm going to go check into this thing. I think at least in the music community, that stuff's expensive. America doesn't care about you, man, on that level. They don't, they're not going to roll out a six-week treatment facility like on their dime so you can get a little better and stronger in life. And it's a very cold world. I'm sorry to tell you that. But we need to change that because I really wish, I think that we could learn a lot from Canada. I think we could learn a lot, a lot from other countries. And we should have something that's not welfare, like considered like um, scruffy or street level, like that anyone could say, look, I'm not doing good. I need to go really assess stuff and reconfigure the whole way that I approach everything and, and adjust my lens because I'm not okay. I just don't think that's even available here. It's not. And, and talking about it normalizes it more and hopefully gets it out there. Yeah. You know, when you see gun violence and they immediately turn to mental health, it's like, okay, then what are you doing for mental health? Yeah. No, nothing. Nothing. Because it's, like it's not that. happening. Yeah. And, you know... Um, the people who are doing good, you're going to go ahead and keep doing good. And the people that fall behind, whoops, sorry, man. Sorry, you got a disability, pal. We've got, we're running a capitalist country here. 
Well, this is my reminder to get out there and vote. Um, thank you, <laughs> William McCarthy, for being here. The solo album, under the name William McCarthy, his alter ego, alter ego is uh, called Shelter. You can find Pela's music, Augustine's, We Are Augustine's out there as well. And I highly recommend their documentary, Rise, a story of Augustine's and uh, Billy's book as well. Thank you for being here, man. Tonight, we will see you again at our gathering space. I appreciate you coming up here and doing that. Rock o'clock. <laughs> see you soon. Be well. Uh, this has been uh, the morning show, well into the midday show for our Music Heals Mental Health Day. Thank you for listening. And remember, you are not alone. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.